Hello everyone, so we are here. I came to you live this morning and said I was gonna come back and talk about what all transpired uh, from this morning all the way up until now. So, I am Corinne from fitandfat.com. You can visit the website at P as in Paul, N as in no, P as in Paul, 411.com if you wanna get more information. This live, I always do show notes, a blog, uh, anything that we talk about that is like extra always goes in there. So if you want to make sure that you always see those, go to the site, pnp411.com, click on the free course that will get you on the mailing list. And today we're talking about planning for a healthy week. My free course on that site is all about planning for a healthy week. So if you want like a workbook, uh, like an actual planning page if you want videos on like how to get your mind right that will be the program for you a lot of my girls are going to come in here so if you are one of my members will you just hashtag it PNP tribe and if you're just one of the girls that loves to follow me and listen to the podcast and all that kind of good stuff hashtag PNP groupie so this morning we started with me preaching about how important it is to get your week planned not only to get your week planned, but to get prepared for it. I think one of the things that I see most women bitch and moan about is that they do not like feeling behind all week. And I see a lot of people who blame the world for the reason why they can't lose weight. If I didn't have that flat tire, I would have lost weight this week. If my kid hadn't gotten sick, if, 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 if this didn't happen, then I could. That is ass backward thinking. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the world has nothing to do with what you choose to put into your mouth. And part of what you choose to put in your mouth all starts with the right Sunday mindset. I think a lot of people, I used to do this all the time when I weighed 250. I would go into Monday just thinking that I was going to kill it this week. Like, this is the week. Like, I'm so sick and tired of being overweight. I will lose my weight this week. I can't tell you how many journal entries. I've kept a diary since I was nine that my whole mindset was that, you know, for some reason this Sunday and Monday was just going to be different. You know, I'd blown it all weekend and I wasn't changing anything that I was going to do. What I was, I was just like basically verbal vomiting my desire to change, but I wasn't putting action behind it. So one of the things that I talk to my clients and stuff about a lot is that it's more than just wanting it. Wanting to lose weight is exhausting. It, it will feel like a job if you're not careful. And so I talk to people all the time. It's like, you know, I get that you want to lose weight, but that's tiring. So unless you're ready to put action behind it, stop wanting it until that moment comes. Then I start teaching people, once they're like, no, I really want it, and now I'm really, I'm really ready to do something about it, I get you in check on what you're actually willing to do. What most people think is that dieting equals overhauling your entire lifestyle, like in a drop, and that doesn't happen either. You know, when I lost my weight, so for those of you who don't know my story, I was 250 most of my life. I was overweight since the age of nine, battled obesity. I was in my 200s in high school. Just, I mean, I just have been overweight all the time. I was, I mean, I put on a lot of weight when I had my son, but I was already overweight. So it, it just kept going up and down, up and down. And then when I hit 30, I decided to change. And I had a rock bottom moment like many people do. I was sitting there looking at my kid and wanting to play with him, couldn't play with him, all that kind of good stuff. And I had just decided that I was done quitting on myself and I was done doing things I wasn't willing to do for the rest of my life. And that was my two golden rules to lose weight. And that's what I've done ever since. I've had my weight off now for 12 years. For 10 years I've been running a, a weight loss website where I help women make the real change in their life. So I think that the next phase for what I do for people is like, okay, let's decide if we're going to want it and actually do something about it or we're going to just quit wanting it for a while and we're just going to work on something else because that's literally mentally exhausting then the next thing is we're going to com we're going to learn how to commit and learning how to commit is the first video in my free series so if you go over to pnp411.com that's what the first video talks about the workbook talks about it and 
it boils down to this. You do not have to change everything to change your life. You have to get really good at making changes that you will stick with and that changes your life. So you pick the next best thing. If you're one of my girls, one of the things that you know, like y'all can, if you've heard me say this at least a thousand times, you can go ahead and like this one. <laughs> you are one decision away from your life changing. You are one sentence away from everything changing. That is really all it takes. And what that means is, so many of you think you have to change everything so you change nothing. When you could change the next meal, you could eat a little less. Even if the meal's not perfect, that's one decision you can make that changes everything. And as you get good at committing to the small things you're willing to do, what happens is you start building practice and it's like you start building your commitment bone, your stick to it bone. You know, a lot of you tell me, I don't know why I sabotage myself. I don't know why these things happen. It's because you're say, you tell your, you're practicing the lying to yourself. You're telling yourself we're going to do this and then you don't, you don't follow through. So you get really used to just not following through and it's not a big deal in the moment. It's only a big deal when you weigh in, put your pants on, look in a mirror. Then all of a sudden, all those quits that you did for yourself, all of that shit adds up and compounds on you at one time. But in the moment, it doesn't feel like a big deal because you've practiced it not being a big deal. That's why I'm like, flip the script. Practice this. When you say you're going to do something for yourself, you follow through unless you're bleeding out your eyeballs. Literally. You no longer stab yourself in the back. You now always have your own back. So you won't do anything when it comes to losing weight ever again unless you're ready to go all in on it. Doesn't mean you won't make mistakes and stuff, but when you go in with that mindset, when you make a mistake, which is going to be video four in my series, I'm like giving away the whole free course here, but the next thing is when you make mistakes, you don't judge and shame yourself because you're practicing having your own back. You get used to looking at a mistake and saying, how do I fix this? Rather than, it's all broken, I must be broken. I must be a failure. I can't do this. So those are just some of the things. That's why Sunday is so important. And then once you get to where you're practicing commitment and stuff, you do massive food preps just like this one. <laughs> So this is the biggest food prep that I have done in ages because I have been traveling so much. I have been everywhere. I have had, I mean, literally since April when all my girls came for, uh, had 50 of my clients come to Nashville for a retreat. I have been traveling or doing something where every week our food prep has been salad bar in the fridge, salad bar in the fridge. And I was telling Chris, my husband this morning, I said, Look, I'm doing a food prep live today, and the last thing I'm talking about is the salad bar in the fridge. I think I've got 40 Facebook Lives now where that's all I've talked about. <laughs> so I was like, last night, laying in the bed, we were watching, we, were, we had been working all day and stuff, and I was like, I'm going to take care of me right now. I want to make sure that my Sunday goes off without a hitch. I want to wake up enthusiastic and ready to prepare my week. So I thought about, I just took out literally a notepad. I thought about what do I want to eat this week? What will I enjoy? What will I look forward to? Now, I will say this. One of the easiest ways to lose weight, you do not have to do this, but if I'm a beginner, and I've been doing this for 12 years, is pick stuff you like that you know you will eat, and then just eat that for a week. And then move on to the next one the next week. Eventually what happens is you get to where you can mix it up. Like I know now if I want to create a couple of meals or whatever, I can do that. But when you first start, a lot of you will say that, you know, food prep's overwhelming. Or, you know, it's just so hard and all this stuff. It's like it goes back to that first rule I have for you about the commitment. You know, commit to one meal. Commit to one thing. Commit to fixing one aspect of your food prep. You do not have to do the whole thing the first week. I have a bunch of brand new members who are in their own little, little tribe right now for 30 days. Them girls work with me and my coaches and we train them on all the basics. So today is like their first Sunday and they just started joining a couple days ago. 
So we will start with them on what's the one change you can make this week. By the time they get out of that group, they will, and most of them are probably in here going, what, I'm gonna know how to do a food prep by the end of 30 days. Like, yes, you will know how to do a food prep by the end of 30 days. Because we're gonna layer it in. And that's all you have to do. Now I'm gonna teach them, but you can do the same. It just takes some time, effort, and thought, that's all. And it doesn't take a lot of time. You would be surprised when you give food prep a shot how little time it actually takes. So, I sat down with a piece of paper, what I wanna eat, I came up with my, my what I call first meal. I do um, butter coffee in the morning. If you do not know what butter coffee is, go to the Facebook page, look, um, there's a, uh, like a pinned post at the top. The recipe for butter coffee is on my blog. If you wanna just go to pnp411.com and search under blogs, just search coffee, you will find a video of me making it, but everybody loves it, and that's what I drink in the morning. So I start with that, and then I go work out, then I come home and work a little bit, and then I eat my first meal around 11, like sometimes between 10 and 11. So first meal this week is this. And I'm just gonna tell you, it was so hard not to eat some of this stuff. <laughs> like, this is a, a Mexican savory. So a lot of times I do fruit cereal, which if you also go to the blog, pnp411.com, and you look under probably food prep, if you will just search for fruit cereal, you will find fruit cereal. Kim does try uh, close up today. No, closes tomorrow, Kim. But go ahead and get in if you wanna hear a bunch of food prep doobage today. <laughs> but anyway, so what this is, is I went ahead and scrambled my eggs. I scrambled them in butter. And then this is some uh, peppers and onions. I made sheet pan fajitas, I'll show you that next. But I made extra peppers while I was making my sheet pan fajitas so I could throw them on top of this. And then I've got some sweet potato, some black beans, and I have uh, half an avocado in each one of these. And this will be breakfast each day. Uh, I will just get this out, put it in a bowl, just save the avocado, Put some um, lemon juice on your avocado if you don't want it turning brown. I don't care if it turns brown, but it's really just a visual, but a lot of you don't do that. So then I'll heat this up and then I'll eat this and it'll be delicious. And if it's not enough, I'll just have a piece of fruit on the side or something. But I think this will be plenty because between a half an avocado, a couple of eggs cooked in butter and stuff, this is really good. And this will be the meal that I will eat after um, working out in the mornings too, which has got good carbs, just got a lot of good stuff in it. So that's meal one for me. And then meal two is, so I know this looks odd. This is steak and caramelized onions. This is going on a salad. So I am having my big salad. Don't worry, I didn't like, you know, like forget about all of the big salads. These containers, guys, some of you are already asking. They, if you go to the Facebook page, my Facebook page, it's facebook.com slash P as in Paul, N as in no, P as in Paul, girl.com. At the top is a pinned post. You can get a link to these containers. They're awesome. They're on Amazon. But I'll be putting this on a salad with blue cheese, whatever dressing I like. I eat full fat dressing. Everybody's like, what dressing do you eat? I, whatever tastes good. I, I didn't gain all my weight because I had a dressing problem. I gained all my weight because I was dipping french fries in dressing. Dressing was never the issue. So when I weighed 250, you know, there were some things that needed to go, but dressing isn't one of them. So I use real dressing on my salad because I love salads and I'm gonna enjoy my salads. And I like to eat one or two a day. This week I'm eating just the one, unless I decide to put my sheet pan fajitas on a salad, which I do that sometimes too. So this will, I also have cherry tomatoes that are in the fridge and I have some celery, some blue cheese, and this will go on top. And I just buy the, the Dole salad um, blends, those uh, bags that have stuff in them. That's all, that's what I get. I also buy from the Good Bean Company, dried chickpeas, and I like to throw a few of those on top. It makes me feel like I'm having croutons, but they're extra crunchy. If you don't drink coffee, Karen, you can use hot tea if you like hot tea. A lot of my girls use hot tea. Uh, this is not my, well, let me do all my food first, and then I'll show you my baby's food. <laughs> my little Logie, he's my son. This is sheet pan fajitas, and I will, I shot a little video of like mixing it up, so you, this is the finished product, but they're super simple. If you go to Pinterest and look for them, you can find them. I have a Pinterest page, it's pinterest.com slash fit and fat. This is probably under protein, if I had to guess. Um, 
You can even do green tea, guys. Any any tea works. Um, you take peppers, onions, and you cut them up. You throw them on. Like I use, I would show you the dirty pans. They're sitting right here, but I'm not going to. I take a baking sheet. I throw down aluminum foil on that. Uh, then you take chicken. I just bought the chicken already in strips today just for quickness because I knew I was going to have to go live pretty soon. And then I sprinkle olive oil over the top. I buy a fajita seasoning packet. I put that on top. I toss it with my hands and then bake it in the oven at 375 for about 40 minutes or until the chicken is like good and done. That's all you have to do. And it's finished. And you can put anything you want in there. You can do uh, like teriyaki sauce and stuff. If you want to do other kinds of um, things, you can do that too. But this is delicious. I am putting this on a baked potato. I did not bake my potatoes. I like to bake my sweet potatoes ahead because I like mine done in the microwave because I don't like them overly sugary. I like mine more um, firm, I guess, not all mushy. So I will bake my potato in the microwave like four or five minutes and then I'll put a little sour cream on that, full fat. I do all full fat, guys. And then I'll put this on top. And then if I don't want this um, on a baked potato, like let's just say I'm not craving a baked potato, I'll throw it on top of a salad. I always keep hummus packs and I keep guacamole packs in my fridge at all times. So I can throw this on a salad and toss it with guacamole and a little dressing and just throw some of those chickpeas on there. Delicious. So I have two options with this one. Then I made, so for my son, he's home for the summer and he, I like for him to eat healthy. So I made him some yogurt bowls. He loves yogurt. So I bought him some, some, I don't know, it's some organic yogurt with vanilla in it. So he's getting this and then I just cut up strawberries and blueberries. And then he's got four bowls of this. One morning we're actually, <laughs> one day we're going to get facials and there is a restaurant that he loves. <laughs> so we're going to go over there and um, he's going to have breakfast there. There's a, um, we're having them pretty early, but it's a Japanese restaurant. He is obsessed with Asia, just obsessed with Asia. So uh, it's a big treat for him. And so he and I are having date morning, date day. Uh, let's see, and that's why we both have the four breakfasts, because we'll start our meals there. And then I have made him, um, this is gluten-free pasta with ground turkey, olive oil, and marinara. I buy the Rayos. He loves Rayos. I don't make homemade uh, pasta sauce. You can, but I don't. Um, you know, if I want my food prep to be two and a half hours, I'm not going to be making homemade sauce on top of it. So he has these so he can just you know while I'm working I work from home but during the day he knows mama's working and I take I take breaks and when he's ready to eat when we're ready to have lunch he'll heat his up I'll heat mine up and then we'll eat together um, and y'all probably think I baby him a lot but I do baby him a lot <laughs> uh, this is his dinner so he's got the same chicken that I made in the sheet pan fajitas with baked beans and this is rice, just some rice with, um, it was just basically some kind of, uh, just a packet. I think it was a, I think this is a, top, no, this is actually an Asian seasoning packet that I put in this one because he likes the Asian seasonings and a little extra teriyaki sauce. So this is what he's having. And then he always has, I have a lot of fruit in there. So then he always has fruit afterward. And then I also have, uh, those sugar snap peas with hummus packets. He can eat those for snacks. He's got nuts, trail mix, different things like that in there that he can munch on during the day that he needs to do. And then, let's see. That's everything that I cooked so far. Or, or that's everything for the day. Now, in the refrigerator, I went ahead and cut up tomatoes, celery. All the salad bags are ready. Um, so my uh, hard-boiled eggs, we have some that we bought, but we are, um, if I need to make more hard-boiled eggs this week, we keep it about a dozen to a dozen and a half eggs at all times in our fridge. If I need to make more, I make those in the Instapot. It's an amazing machine. Now, I didn't cook in the Instapot today. I normally do, but it's pretty phenomenal. You can cook potatoes, all kinds of stuff in it, rice, that kind of junk. Um, you do with the eggs you put a cup of water in the bottom you put your eggs in the basket in the instapot four minutes and i swear to god you can peel them with one hand somewhere on my facebook video page is a pic is a video of me filming myself peeling eggs with one hand i just think the instapot's magic my girls love it they use it all the time it's just 
one of those things. I always tell people about the Instapot because I'm just like, it's the best invention that was ever made. And it can double, um, I think it doubles as a crock pot. I've not used it as a crock pot. And I think that's it. Like, that is going to get us through the week. So, what do you do with all this? You eat it. Why is this important? Because when you are sitting here, a lot of you heard me tell you this this morning. On Sunday, you are highly motivated to change. Or, you're so sick and tired of the way it's been that you want to change. So, your desire and motivation is at its peak. That is the best time in the world to have your back. That is when you plan. That is when you make all your decisions for yourself for the rest of the week. Because when Wednesday and Thursday rolls around and all the shit's happened all week long and you're tired from going to work and stuff, that is when we get into, oh, uh, let's just go through the drive through Well, if we weren't so busy, we would have ate healthy, but if you're the kind of person who is not making good decisions through the week, then you need to make all of them in one fell swoop and then let yourself have a break the rest of the week. Let yourself feel what it's like for some ease the rest of the week. And that's why I do it. And then I also plan when I'm going to exercise. Guys, not a lot of you, I mean, some of you are exercisers, but most of my clients are not. They come to me and they're like 100 pounds overweight and they're not exercising. I tell them all the time, like, well, then don't start with that. Start with the food. Food is 90% of the battle, so get that right first. And that's why I don't even include a lot of talk about that when people start working with me. I'm like, let's get your mouth under control. Let's get your thinking under control. You control your brain, you will control your mouth. And when you control your mouth, you control your weight. Get those, commit to that first, then you, then you just pop that exercise in. Then exercise seems doable and desirable. Not many people want to start with exercise. And that's okay. I don't want you to think you have to. If you're not ready, it goes back to what I said in the beginning. Start with where you're willing to commit to. Don't start with something that you think you should do. People shouldn't be shouldn't all over themselves. Really. That's the worst thing you can do. If you are interested in my philosophy on exercise, listen to my podcast this week. It released on Friday, the Friday one. There was a bonus episode yesterday, guys, that came out that is a, a recording of a teaching that I did, a, a webinar. In fact, I'm teaching that same webinar live today at 3 p.m. If you want to go to that, you'll have to go to fit and fat is P-H-I-T hyphen N hyphen P-H-A-T dot com, the number three in secrets. And I'm doing that webinar from 3 to 4.30 today. So if you want to listen and you want to ask specific questions, I'm teaching. Basically, I'm te that whole webinar is about how to lose 100 pounds without ever counting calories. And it's a really good one. But I also get into a little bit about like that whole commitment thing. The whole, that's like the first lesson in that one. But with that exercise piece, go listen to the podcast. Seriously. I think people very often think that exercise has, like, I need to be killing it in the gym. I started with 15 minutes of walking a day. I got committed to that before anything. And I just made sure that everything that I was doing, I knew I would do over and over and over again. Now I lift weights. Now I do all kinds of stuff. But it, really, it took being willing to do the first few things. And that's the most important. So that's what this week, that's what Sundays are all about. Sundays are all about you making sure that you have your own back, that you have guaranteed some success for the week. It is allowing you to practice what it feels like to have a good week, what it feels like for the week to not be hard, what it feels like to look forward to things, what it feels like to have easy decisions already made for you. And that comes from having your back on Sunday. So I'm going to go through here and answer questions because there's a lot rolling through now. Let's see. A lot of the PMP girls. <laughs> Karen's watching on the treadmill. A lot of people watch me on the treadmill. That's awesome. Um, let's see. Yes, Tribe closes to all right, closes tomorrow. So if you want to get in, you have to go to pnptribe.com. Look over there. All the registration information is there. Uh, food prepping a little later tonight. Walmart pickup is a lifesaver. It really is. Um, our Walmart doesn't. Our Walmart does it, but it's not very. 
convenient. I'm hoping that our Kroger that is literally a quarter mile from my house, please, Lord, let them get it because <laughs> I want it too. Um, that's my problem. Trying not to eat the prep for the week. I know, like my food has been off the hook today. Tiffany Johnston, black beans from a can or make them? I just buy the organic black beans from the can. I don't make them myself. Tiffany, here's like a lot of you guys. Like I know that there are people that want to make everything homemade and you know they want fresh is best and all this other stuff. It's like I think it's great. If you've got the time, desire, and will to do it, do it. I'm all about it's got to be easy. Like I need to be able to get my food prep done in two hours flat and I need to be able to make this volume of food plus everything that's in there in like two hours. So certain things I just do not, I'm like I'm not going to make canned bean or beans fresh. I'm not going to do the um, pasta marinara. You know, I buy seasoning packets, stuff like that. And I think that's fine. I think it just depends on the person and how deep they want to go. So like this morning I got up, I hit the store, I did a Facebook Live, unloaded the groceries because my husband never got out of bed to help me. <laughs> I did a 50 minute workout Came back in, got the food prep done, ate breakfast, showered, got ready, and now I'm back on Facebook Live. So it all happened because I had everything just planned. It wasn't hard. It just, I just thought about it. It probably took me 15 minutes to plan to be able to do all of that. And that, as so many people get caught up in like, they think it's gonna take forever. And they, they like sit around and they'll think about how long it's gonna take and how hard it's gonna be. And in that amount of time, and it will feel like you were actually doing it, you never did anything. So many of us spend mental energy thinking about things being hard, feeling it being hard, and we never actually even did it. And it's like, what if you just like stop thinking about it for a minute and just start doing? I tell people all the time, if you're in ambivalence, if you're confused, if you're overwhelmed, or you're thinking something's going to be hard, just start with one thing. Just get in there. Because... All of that can't compete with you trying to do it at the same time. It has to take the back seat and you can't think about it anymore. So it's always get into action. Just figure out something. Uh, Jennifer, if you'll go to the pinned post at the top, um, you will see the container link. So go to facebook.com slash P as in Paul, N as in no, P as in Paul, girl.com, pinned post. The containers are there. The butter coffee recipe is there. If you want the Instapot, it's there. All the things that you guys ask me about all the time, I created a post so I wouldn't have to like be always coming back in and linking everybody to it. Uh, what if you don't drink coffee? We answered that one. You're going to drink tea, and green, green tea is great. Corinne, do you eat that whole bowl? Yes, I eat the whole bowl. Now, here's the thing. When I don't measure, guys, at all. I just buy what I think we're going to need, and then I just make containers. But I teach my clients a system if you go to that webinar today, it's in that webinar, but it's basically where I start eating when I feel hungry, not emotionally hungry, not pissed off hungry, not bored hungry, not it's three o'clock hungry. I start eating when I start sensing that I'm hungry and then I stop when I'm satisfied. Easy. Not a single calorie is ever counted. I didn't count... The, almost all the weight I lost, I never even count cal uh, counted calories. And for a hot second, I joined Weight Watchers just to get off the last little bit. And I didn't even need that then. I needed to be listening to my body. I just didn't realize that was my problem then. I just had, was so used to being in the clean plate club, I had no clue that you didn't, you could actually turn your membership card back in. So it's all about like just, I just tell people, if you don't do anything, just don't eat until you're full. Stop before you're full. Full is more than your body needs. Right? You want to eat to about satisfied. And that's what we teach in our tribe. We teach people how to, how do you figure that out physically? How do you figure that out mentally? How do you, how do you argue, like when your self starts saying, oh, we're wasting food or, you know, like all the bullshit that our brain loves to tell us, we teach you how to turn it off. Because <laughs> it's coming. Trader Joe's has a Moroccan mint tea. Reminds me of a Tazo tea. Oh, that sounds good. Uh, hi, everyone. First time on live. New to Planet Mills. Hello, Diane. 
Um, what kind of sweeteners do you use, if any? Nima, I do use Splenda. Now, not everybody likes artificial sweeteners and stuff, but I use Splenda. I have just I don't use a lot though. I mean, I just if I want something sweet, I'm just not a big sweetener girl. But if I do want something sweet, I just throw a little Splenda in there. Um, even my son, he doesn't even now he I don't use Splenda with him, but he doesn't really eat sugar. So. I don't know. You could use, but you can use anything you want. I think that most people, when they're cooking, just do what you feel right about and what you feel comfortable about in your body. You know, don't eat Splenda just because I said it, and don't eat sugar just because somebody else said it. Work on just adding as much healthy, good for you stuff as you can, and don't eat to full. Let's see, how many times a day do you eat? Sarah, three. I don't snack, so I do my coffee in the morning. I do a meal, a meal, and a meal, and that's it. I cut out snacking probably, oh, girls, how long ago was it? My tribe, um, maybe it was like last November or December. I just I stopped snacking. I realized I didn't need it. I was eating because I had always planned for snacks, and I just always, I. For a long time, ate out of the fear of getting hungry. Even after I'd lost my weight and kept it off for a long time, I worried about getting hungry. And then I worked with, I was working with my tribe on the concept of, well, what if you do get a little hungry? Not what your body's supposed to do, first of all. I was like, well, yeah. And then the other concept was, then just eat your next meal. I mean, we just, I don't tell my tribe members that they can't have snacks. I think snacks are fine, especially in the very beginning. If you're, very mixed up on hunger cues and stuff. I think that starting with more meals rather than less is a good way to learn when your hunger starts and when it's finished. But I personally don't snack anymore. And a lot of my longer term clients that have lost a lot of weight, they no longer snack anymore either. That we have found that now that we, you know, we're done with the low fat age and all that kind of bullshit. Now that we eat a lot of fat and we're like, in, you know, I'm doing half an avocado every day, two whole eggs every day. I do full fat dressing, everything I cook with olive oil or coconut oil. I put oil in my, like butter and stuff in my coffee. I don't need the volume of food that I thought I needed. And it's so much better for me. And I feel better. I swear to God, I look younger. I mean, I just, I don't know. So it's one of the things that like my meals now will hold me a good four or five hours. Uh, does your hubby have portions as well? Tara, he does a salad every night. He does his own lunch. He goes out for lunch a lot. He, eats, he uh, you know, he eats, <laughs> he eats his way. Let's put it that way. You know, if we go out to eat, he, you know, he eats burgers and beers. I mean, he's his own man. I don't make him eat a certain way. I have never made him eat a certain way. My mouth is my mouth. His mouth is his mouth. I will make him anything if he wants to tote pizza and hamburgers in here every day of the week, even when I was losing weight. I let him have whatever he wanted. The vast majority of my clients that have the best success are the ones that make peace with the idea that when you are working on you, you keep your eyes on your own paper. Everybody else gets to eat what they want. You're choosing to eat what you want, so why can't they? Just because you're deciding to be healthy, why do they have to be healthy? Would it be great if everybody fell in line? Yes, it would be. But you can't wait for your success hoping the rest of the world will change in order for you to get there. Just go get your success. That's all you got to do. It's sitting there in front of you. You don't need to delay it. So I just, I, he doesn't, you know, I make him his big salad bar in the fridge. He makes what I call salad soup. <laughs> It is terrible. <laughs> so he makes like, I don't know, maybe this much lettuce in a bowl about this big. He'll put some celery in it and he puts his tomatoes in there. And then he puts guacamole, about a half a bottle of bacon ranch dressing, croutons, bacon, a lot of turkey, a lot of cheese, two eggs. It's a lot of stuff. And, he, and But it's like, it's soupy by the end, and it's buckling, and I'm just like, you go, big boy. Just, you get that. You know, eat up. So, he does. Um, hi, really enjoy your videos. What is your advice if someone wants to eat healthy but financially or tight? You know, a lot of, you just go and you look for what's on sale. Like, I wouldn't make a huge menu. What I would do is I would make a basics menu. I mean, rice is dirt cheap. 
A lot of proteins are dirt cheap. You can get, you know, a lot of chicken for hardly nothing. I would start with just those basics and then I would layer in the fruits and vegetables that are on sale and stuff. Um, you know, canned beans. I mean, your beans and rice and that kind of stuff. I would just make sure you're getting your fruits and vegetables. But it doesn't matter. I mean, you can eat healthy still inexpensively. Frozen vegetables are going to be your friend. Do a lot of stir fries. Buy those bags of like peppers and onions and stuff that are like at our Kroger, they're like $1.29 a bag and that will get you two to three meals. That with rice and a little chicken thrown in there, you got a meal. You know, it's, it's not that hard. Eggs are cheap. You know, you can make eggs in the morning. You can have, I mean, there's like eggs and a banana, you know, that's not going to be mega expensive. All of those things are cheap. It's just putting your mind to say like, I'm going to eat healthy this week and I'm going to do it in a way that's financially responsible. Like put your brain to work on that. But what happens is when I see questions usually phrased like this, I'm not saying you're doing this and that, I'm just saying this is what most people are doing, is that they'll say, well, I don't have much money so it's hard to eat healthy. So then your brain goes to work on seeing everything that's healthy and expensive and it's like, see, I told you, that healthy shit, man, that's hard. That's like so expensive. But when you're sitting there and you're like, okay, we're going to eat healthy this week and this is how much money we're going to have. How are we going to eat? How are we going to create the best, healthiest meals around this amount of money? Your brain will start noticing when you go to the store all the things you can do to eat healthy on a budget. It, it literally is that easy. It's really that easy. How do you make the chicken fajitas? What seasoning? I just use it. I just buy whatever fajita seasoning packet they've got. Tanya, I will in my blog. So if you go to P is and Paul, N is and O, P is and Paul, 411.com, I will be blogging this video and I will have a recipe or another little video of that chicken fajita stuff in that blog. And it will go out. It'll go out either tomorrow or Tuesday. I have been meal planning for a few months now. I love it. I've lost weight because the choices are ready to go. Exactly. My son is on two baseball teams, so we are on the go all day with tournaments. So I just pack up our food in a cooler. Thanks for teaching me this. You're welcome, Becky. I think that's one of the best things, too, is because then, because like a lot of people do have kids that are athletes, and it drives me crazy when you have a kid that's in athletics and they're working hard, the last thing they need is drive through to replenish. I mean, I highly doubt that, like, let's just, just say our college football players, our college basketball players. Now, a lot of you want your kids to go up in sports and go on. They need to learn how to fuel an athletic body now so that they can keep on going. Eating in the drive through I doubt, like, you know, the stars of the, let's just say the Tennessee Vols because it is my favorite team in the world, of the baseball team, they're probably not hitting McDonald's afterward. I am bet you their coach has them eating healthy because it's such a key part of athletics. And yay for you, Mama. Uh, Gabriella, would you would love to see how see how to meal prep and what containers and how you measure? Gabriella, I do not measure. These are the containers. <laughs> I just cook and I just throw it in there, and that's really it. I you know it's. I have always thought about doing a video where like y'all are watching me chop, but I'm like. Literally, all you're doing is watching me chop. You know, I'm like, I don't know if y'all need to actually see that. I think that, I mean, I could do it one day, but it would kind of be a long, boring-ass live. But it's more about, like, get in there and do some food. Like, pick one meal. Figure out your system and what you need for it. Pick another meal the next week. Figure out your system for that. I mean, the ba I tell you one of the, I've done a uh, food prep video before where I've talked about this, but one of the... Actually, I tell you, I'll do you one better, Gabriella. If you'll go to my podcast, P-H-I-T dot click slash podcast, www.fit dot click slash podcast, there is a whole podcast on food prep where me and my co-host, we give you all of our secrets. We talk about our stations. We talk about, you know, like our mindset. We talk about how we start, how we end. I always start with a clean kitchen and all that kind of stuff. So I would look at that podcast. There's also the two preceding that one are all about the food rules. A lot of times people ask me about food rules. That will give you a good idea of like my thoughts on stuff because you're asking about containers and measuring and all that stuff. That's part of what I cover in food rules one and two. It's a two-parter. You're effing awesome. Thank you for the motivation. Prepping now. You're welcome, Lisa. 
Um, why do you close the tribe? Karen, I close after each opening round. We open, uh, this time we only opened for five days because what we do is we take all new members, we put them into one group, and we work with all the new members specifically to teach them the basics. When they come out of there, I want them really understanding my methodology. My methodology is very different than what else is out there. I'm all about, they have to learn how to think in a way that's gonna help them lose weight. Most women I know do not have a lack of knowledge when it comes to what to do. They are totally effed up in the idea of like, I know what to do, but I don't know why I just don't do it. Why do I keep sabotaging myself? Why am I overeating? Why is four o'clock so hard for me? Why is nine o'clock I'm standing in the pantry and I'm not even hungry? That is what I specialize in. So when my girls join, they learn how to untangle a lot of that. We do teach them food prep and we do teach them how to plan and we teach them like how to diet, like, one of our biggest lessons is understanding the difference between your physical hunger and your emotional hunger. I would say 99% of the women I work with, 99%, when they figure out the difference between physical and emotional, so much of their overeating goes down. Just because it's a lot of eating that they didn't even know they were doing that was just extra. And we're not even getting into like the healthy food yet. We're not even get I mean we're not even getting into that stuff. We're just cutting out the bullshit eating first. Then we work on the next big phase is now that we know what emotional eating you are doing that you can't stop, now we work on that. Why are you eating? Is it because your marriage is bad? Is it because you think that um your life is too hard? Is it because you believe you'll always be fat? Is it because you think you're broken because you were, you know, had awful circumstances as a child. We work a lot on that stuff. You clean that up, life explodes. And then your weight comes along for the ride. Most people, their weight's coming along for the shitty ride that they're on right now. And that's kind of what I work on. But I close it because I don't want new members coming in all the time. We used to do that. And it's easier to take one group, train them right, get them all on board and we move them into our where all of our members who've been members for a while we put them all together and then they work as a community there and then like i release new content every month so like <laughs> they're all going through a program right now hang on a second they're all going through a program right now called blame to badass where i did a um some audios and i wrote a book and worksheets for them to work on it's a quick course that they it's the june focus where um, basically it's where a lot of us blame our life for all, all the reasons why we can't do what we want to do. And I'm teaching them how to stop blaming and start acting and how to take control and be the badass that you want to be. So that's their, that's their monthly program. They're all working through it. So, but that's why I do that. I hope that answers it. Tara, I just wanted to thank you. I am down 133 pounds. Oh my gosh. I have 50 pounds to go. These messages keep me going. I was hoping to join the tribe, but I paid a shitload to my equine vet this week. Oh my gosh. So I will join you next round. That'd be awesome, Tara. We'll be happy to have you. And just in the meantime, like guys, I put out a lot of free content. I tell people this all the time. We're not cheap. And Lord knows I don't want to be cheap anyway. <coughs> but it's because we are giving such... I mean, we're not giving the same bullshit diet advice everybody else is selling for 30 bucks on the internet. I mean, if that's what you want, go buy meal plans, go buy grocery lists, and do that. I'm different. You see me in that tribe. You hear me. This stuff happens daily, all the time. And we get to know you. And then you get to know other women who are doing the same work as you, who are in the same boat as you. And you all start getting stronger together. But ours is more about like, the reason why it's not cheap is because I am writing programs for my tribe every month and I'm hands-on and my coaches are hands-on. Like we're working with you through your shit. You're not alone. You know, you get a meal plan from somebody off the internet for 30 bucks, they're like, good luck. Or if you join one of their free groups, you might see that person every now and then, but they're not like following up with you all the time. Every time you post, they're like, <laughs> why were you thinking that? <laughs> Which I think some of our girls got this morning and last night. We were all in there. There was uh, two or three coaches on at one time last night. And we were all laughing because we were um, 
we were all coaching, uh, coaching the same person at the same time. <laughs> How many days you prep ahead for? Gabriella, I do a week's worth. So, like, usually what I do is I prep for Monday through Friday, and then a lot of times I'll have, like, a little extra, and then I'll have enough food on Saturday. And then we always eat out on, <clears throat> we plan to eat out, sorry, <clears throat> we plan to eat out on usually Friday nights and Saturday nights. One night is date night, so that's me and my husband, and one night's family date night, so that's me, my husband, and my son. And so we go out to eat both of those days. We go to the same kinds of places all the time, so I always know what I'm ordering and I always plan ahead, but I don't cook for that because I know that we're going to be going out. And then I cook on Sunday, and a lot of times on Sunday, we just do any leftovers that might have happened, or we always keep some frozen backups and stuff if we need to do that. Every now and then, I'll make a lot and have like one or two meals extra. I will freeze those, and then we can just pull them bad boys out like on a Saturday and Sunday if we need it. How do you keep the avocado from not turning brown? Liz, you, you're just gonna squirt lemon juice all over the avocado and that's what keeps it from not turning brown. Do you make a grocery list before you go? Paige, I do. I just write my menu out and then I just start making my list off of everything like, okay, so that's gonna need tomatoes and that's gonna need this and I just make my grocery list and it's pretty easy. I can't afford to join, but I love your lives. That's fine, Karen. Just keep doing the lives and do the podcast, guys. The podcast is really good too. We have lots of... Um, other things that we talk about on there so they're also really nice and the free course Karen if you want to do it it's also super super helpful it's at um, P is in Paul N is in no P is in Paul 411.com thank you for offering so much help and advice for free you've been a great inspiration I've lost 10 pounds in the last seven weeks that's awesome because of a change in mindset and a few habits you rock would love to join the tribe, but financially is best for me to wait a few months. I'm thankful for the free information so I can still start now. Exactly, guys. You do not have to wait until you have your finances. And you don't have to, like, seriously. I'm constantly pumping out the free content. You know, some people, like, the nice thing about joining is it's all plugged in for you. And then you have daily support. But if you can't afford it, just get after it. Just listen to positive stuff every day download my stuff follow those plans i mean really guys follow a plan and then pump if, if there was one piece of advice i would give everybody when it comes to losing weight it would be quit listening to your friends who bitch all the time quit watching television all the time and start filling your head with positivity start filling your head with the things you want to be doing in life if you want to be losing weight listen to good podcasts like mine you know or listen to um Tips from the Scale is another good one. Uh, the Life Coach School is my mentor. It's an excellent podcast. Real Weight Loss for Real Women is another good one. Listen to those podcasts. They're so good. You know, or listen to some of these Facebook Lives. Hell, I've probably got 100 or 150 now that are over an hour long. You have all your listening pleasure right there. You know, listen to them and see what nuggets you're picking up and just start plugging them into your life. It doesn't always have to be a big orchestrated plan. Karen, Costco sells containers. Oh, that's good to know. Do your containers get white crud on them? I don't know if it's from the dishwasher. It must be from the dishwasher, Melissa. You can buy those. Um, there's dishwasher tabs that you can put in to clean your dishwasher. Because mine, do, mine doesn't get it. But once a month, I run my dishwasher with, um, oh, God, I cannot remember the name of that stuff. But my husband buys it. But we run it, and it's like supposed to descale your dishwasher and stuff. And that might be what's happening to you. Heidi, you're brilliant, and Corinne knows what's up. Life-changing program. Thank you, Heidi. Uh, Julie, I go to the gym and work out three days a week, elliptical, trainer, stepper, treadmill, and on the weekend, I walk the neighborhood three miles, Saturday and Sunday, but I'm not losing any weight. Is it because I'm gaining muscle? Julie, you're not going to be gaining muscle, especially just doing all cardio. If you're not losing weight, it might be because you're doing all cardio. I would probably... Um, I'd probably get some weights going at least once or twice a week. You might have to skip your, I'd skip the elliptical to be honest. Um, I wouldn't even worry about that. But I would make sure that you're doing some, um, doing some weights. I, if you go to, what's the best? If you go to YouTube, look for Fitness Blender. They have really good videos that you can do even at your house or you could stream in a gym and you could do it just in a corner with some dumbbells and stuff. Um, 
Bodybuilding.com has some really good beginner women's strength training programs. You could look there if you want to do a piece of paper, but if you're not used to using weights, I'd probably do something like Fitness Blender at first. Or ask at your gym if you could just hire a trainer for two to three sessions and just tell them, look, I'm not buying a big package. Here's what I want. I want something that I can do on my own, and for the next two to three sessions, I want you to show me exactly what to do so that I can do it on my own. You just need to tell me what I'm going to need because that's what I'm going to do for like the next six months. And a lot of times they'll oblige. Those trainers want to make money. So I would do that. Uh, and then also I just make sure that you are um, not overeating. And a lot of times people think they're not overeating, but if they're eating past satisfied, they are. So just make sure that you're actually waiting until you're hungry before you eat and that you're stopping before you're full. Uh, let's see. <laughs> What if you are a diabetic? Uh, Paige, I work with diabetics. You know, the big thing is still, it's all about managing healthy foods. It's about making sure that you're, you know, a lot of with diabetes and stuff with my clients that all have like pre-diabetes and diabetes, thyroid, hypothyroid, I mean, Hashimoto's. We have some that have just experienced cancer and stuff. With that, we do a lot of work around listening to your body in terms of how food makes you feel. A lot of times a lo people are eating a lot of like crappy food, but they're kidding themselves on how terrible it's making them feel. So we have you start tracking like your physical symptoms and stuff, and so that you can at least make an informed decision if you wanna keep eating those foods. Because once you start seeing the reality in your face of what the food's doing in your body, you might change your mind. Um, is raw honey okay on foods in my coffee or is it considered a sugar? It's still a sugar. Sugar, any kind of a sweetener is a sugar. But, I mean, I don't have a problem with it if you like it. Somebody said go vault. Look at all the vols. Yeah, that's right. GBO. Uh, bringing up that glass keeps raw stuff fresh longer. That was a great tip from another video. Oh, yeah. So, when you the reason why I keep so much in glass is because glass containers, like I have mason jars and stuff that I keep our fruit in, it keeps the food from going bad like glass doesn't breathe like plastic so when you keep it in glass you're um so for the girls asking about the expense and stuff keep your food in glass and you will you'll notice you'll get a much longer shelf life off that i'm glad to hear you say potatoes and rice do you eat breads whole grains it seems everyone says no white stuff do you feel the same just depends on your body jennifer i mean i have some clients that do no sugar no flour they do not do white stuff and all that kind of stuff because it makes them feel terrible. They've made a decision to not have it because they want to feel amazing. I eat potatoes, I have white potatoes. That chicken fajita stuff's going on some white potatoes this week. And if I want rice, I almost always eat white rice because I like the taste way much better than I like brown rice. You know, my problem, again, was never a rice problem. My problem was overeating at McDonald's and overeating ice cream and overeating all that kind of stuff, you know. I think that is, you know, really check what your real problem is right now before you decide that there's a lot of foods out there you should feel or fear. I tell people all the time, if God made it, quit stressing it. Like, stress the stuff he didn't make. That's the foods you want to watch out for. But I don't eat much bread. I eat a little bread every now and then, but I don't keep it in the house. If I go out and I want a burger or something, then I will just get one. But... I don't, we don't keep it in the house. <coughs> My son eats almost all gluten-free most of the time. So that's one reason why we just don't keep bread. And so I just don't worry about it. You drink a lot of water. I have a problem drinking water. Can that cause you not to lose weight? Julie, yes. Water is a fat burner. If you like to lose weight, drink water. If you do not like to lose weight, do not drink water. So, Julie, for you, I would say that's probably, uh, if you were to drink your water this week, you'd probably notice your weight would move. Your muscles burn the fat. Your muscles require water in order to operate. You're definitely not going to be building any muscle, Julie, if you are not drinking water. That's, like, never can happen. It's, like, chemically impossible or chemistry-wise impossible. So, make sure you're drinking your water. I do. I drink a gallon of water a day, actually. But... Drink enough water to where your urine runs pale yellow, and then that's where you should be. Uh, and I would just make sure that, I don't know what you're drinking, but I tell people all the time, if it is, um, if you're drinking sodas and stuff, 
before you drink a soda, you have to drink eight ounces of water. Then you can have it if you want it. I tell people all the time, it's one of the best ways to get off soda. So make sure you're drinking the water first. Like earn your soda. I don't think you should be drinking sodas, but it's like a first step. It's like, you know, we, we're, we're not going to go from the bottom of the ladder to the top of the ladder overnight. So let's take it step by step. First thing is get that water going. Could you tell us where to find you at 3 p.m. today? I'm signed up. Can't wait. Henrietta, when it gets see, you should have probably gotten an email by now saying with a link that says we're starting in one hour. Actually, it's less than an hour now. But if, um, if you signed up, you'll get a link and you'll just click on that and it'll take you straight to the webinar. Heidi, a meal plan isn't the answer. Getting the emotional cobwebs out of your head is that That's a really good point. <laughs> I love the way you said that. You're going to hear me steal that, Heidi. Uh, Emily, meal prepping has been life changing. Lost 24 pounds in the last two months because I don't have to think about what I'm going to eat. Thanks, Grant. You're welcome, Emily. That is so awesome. Tim, Tina, sorry, sorry, Tina. Oh my gosh, where have you been my whole life? <laughs> I've been right here. Where have you been, Tina? I need to check into joining your tribe. You are amazing, so real and full of truth. Yeah, just go over to P is in Paul, N is in O, P is in Paul, tribe.com. All the information is there. If you go to the webinar today, I'm gonna, the first like 45 minutes we're teaching and we got our foot on the gas of learning all about the, like how to lose weight without counting the calories. Towards the end, I'm gonna start talking about the tribe and stuff like that. So, um, and my girls, I keep telling you, you do not need to be on today's webinar. That, that webinar, we are doing a blowed out version on Thursday on both tribes. Both tribes are getting invited to the same one. So we're gonna do deep cuts on that one. So I'm gonna take your no BS weight loss system, all your lessons, so that is gonna get plugged into each one of the secrets so you can see all the things that we're doing in there and how they like apply in all those areas. And plus I'll be answering all y'all's questions too at the end. Do you have a list of the sites you just mentioned? I can't write that fast. This, it, I would just go to P is in Paul, N is in O, P is in Paul, 411.com. Like, how many times can I say that in one life? <laughs> I feel like I need it on loop somewhere. If you go there and you get the free course, you will also start getting the blog. So, I blog this live every day, and what I do, or when I do them, I put show notes in there. So I will put the links to the containers. I will put links to the podcast that I mentioned. Um, I will put a link to the butter coffee recipe in there. So all of those things will get into that blog and it will come to your email. So just make sure you're using an email address you like. The crud does come from the dishwasher. Jet dry, jet dry. I no, that's not what we use. We use something that where it cleans it out. Um, it's more fun to blame potatoes than rice and rice than McDonald's. <laughs> I know. Uh, look at all these girls, my girls, food prepping. The tribe is amazing. The comfort and support in women are the best. I couldn't make it without them. I know. And Heidi, you're such a good inspiration in there. I hope you know. Like us coaches, we talk about you. We talk about um, uh, Hallie, uh, the, Jody. There's several of you girls that we, a lot of times when we are, um, it's my team of coaches. We've all lost like tons of weight between all of us. Um, one's 80, one is 60. I mean, just a lot of weight. But we talk about a lot of you girls a lot of times when we're together. And uh, we really are amazed at um, the level of women and support that we have. I mean, I don't, we couldn't be the tribe we are without some of you girls. And for all of the things that, um, that you do for us, just getting in there and loving the tribe members and supporting them and when they're having a bad day, making sure they know that they're not alone and that kind of stuff. So that's always, I just want you to know it's always appreciated and stuff like that. <laughs> do not start crying. Mama can't start crying either because like I can't be on a webinar and be like a big boohoo mess. So, Ugh. But anyway, if you are interested in working with me, I'm only open one more day. We close tomorrow. It you can get information at P is in Paul, N is in No, P is in Paul, tribe.com. There's a video of me talking about what the website is all about, what you get when you join, all that kind of stuff. Yes, Holly, it's still open. It's open till tomorrow, and then we will be closed again and we will move to wait list. So this is June 1st through 5th. If you uh, see this video later and you're still interested, then I would get on the wait list. You'll be the first one to know when we open up again. 
listen to the podcast. If you cannot make my webinar today, but you really want to listen to it, then go over to, uh, it's called Losing 100 Pounds with Fit and Fat. I'd love to, for you to listen to it. You can go to my website, P as in Paul, N as in O, P as in Paul, 411.com. There is a podcast link at the top. It will give you all the episodes with show notes and links to where you can listen. If you love it, leave a review and tell me how much you like it. If you don't love it, sorry, we tried. <laughs> but we are, we are really enjoying the podcast and stuff. It's newer, so it's uh, been a lot of fun. I will be back maybe tomorrow. It depends on how tomorrow's going. I've got like a hundred email from people who all have questions about joining and I am committed no matter what today to get through the webinar to teach the free content to everybody to answer all the questions and um, no matter what it takes and then my son is finally coming home y'all he's 14 I love him to death he has been I left out of town like two weeks ago Friday and he, I have just not seen him, and he is finally coming home tonight, and my goal is to be done working today, and totally having um, engaged time with my baby, and loving on him, and uh, just, oh, it's hard for a mama to be away from her cub that long. <laughs> He's my mini-me. He doesn't have purple hair, but he has blonde hair, and I used to be blonde, so um, it's been... It's been a long, long ride without him. So you guys have a wonderful Sunday. Get after it. Get healthy. Get your stuff planned. Tribe, if you want to know what I eat or I'm eating this week and more detail in my exercise plan, go to the forums. Look for my journal. And if you're new tribe members, you can post in it. <laughs> so many of you, I think, are nervous about talking to me in there. Have at it. I'm all about talking about my life. So if you got any questions or anything, I'll be in there tonight. I'm getting ready to do something spanking new in my life, and I'm going to be journaling about it tonight, and I'm just going to leave it as that little surprise. Later, y'all.